Okay, what's up guys? Hopefully this lighting looks good because I am in my hotel room in Las Vegas. So again, following my journey, then you pretty much know I've already done one of my shows. I'll touch on that here in a minute. And I've got another show coming up on the 24th. My first one was on the 10th. And in between, I have this Fit Pro type of mastermind event in Las Vegas. So initially I wasn't gonna do it because I'm worried it's going to set me back for my main show I've been preparing for. Being out of town, airports, traveling in and out of meetings, working out in different places, bringing some of my food with me. I wasn't able to bring everything that I wanted to bring. So I'm hoping it doesn't set me back much, but I'm going to do everything in my power to knock this out of the park. Because now that I got my first show out of the way, I really really want to put 100% effort into my second show. The first one was the tune-up show. How did the tune-up show go? I entered six different classifications. Being a master's over 40, master's over 45, I was able to enter masters and since I had won several shows in the past, I entered the open classes. So I did men's physique and classic physique. Cause again, I wasn't exactly sure where I fit in with my body type. I'm no longer a bodybuilder. I'm not a really big dude, but I'm more aesthetic. With that said, I still wasn't sure if the classic physique was gonna be best for me or the men's physique. So I wanted to make sure I did both in preparation for my main show which is what's about to come up here in about eight days or so basically i did three different classifications in men's physique and three different classifications in classic physique and i ended up getting four second place finishes and two first place finishes so at the end of the day i am super happy with that because i didn't really do water manipulation sodium manipulation big carb loads going into the show i just tried to keep it lean tried to do the best that i could my main focus with this first show was just how are they going to get me on and off the stage how long do i have between putting my board shorts on and my trunks on so yes i had to get butt naked in the backstage in between classifications because right after i came off of one of my classic physique shows where I'm wearing little trunks. I had to turn right back around and go into my board shorts. So had to put those dudes on and I realized it was a really quick process. It was a learning process. All right, and um, the other thing was, I wasn't exactly sure how the posing was gonna work because when I used to compete, I did it as a bodybuilder. They allowed you time to set up each pose. You do what's called quarter turns. You relax pose, quarter turn to the right, quarter turn to the right, quarter turn to the right. You really get to take your time, set everything and lock the pose in before they actually tell you to turn again, that wasn't the case. So to be straight up honest, the very first time I went up on stage, I lost. I ended up getting second, but it was basically because I didn't even get into my poses. I was still in transitions. Soon as I relaxed, they said, okay, gentlemen, quarter turn to the right. I turned to the right and I'm sitting here trying to lock my legs, hit my abs, get my lats. And I was getting ready to turn and then, okay, quarter turn to the right again before I even locked it in. That happened twice because I wasn't sure how fast paced it was gonna be. But I did end up getting second in that classification. The only reason I said anything about probably I should have gotten first is because I got second to a guy that I ended up beating in the open three classes later. I ended up beating him twice. He entered the open class in the classic and the open class in the men's physique and I beat him in both of those. However, in the individuals, he ended up getting first, I ended up getting second. And I really believe that's why I just wasn't set in my poses. Once I got the hang of it though, I felt a little bit more comfortable. So I felt more comfortable, more confident. The main thing I will say though is I really needed to make sure I carb loaded and I didn't do that. I was afraid to spill over. It was my first time doing a show in so long. So basically that's kind of what happened. I felt small and here's what I do. Typically I would weigh in. You weigh in on Friday night and I know what I weigh Friday night. And then I usually back when I used to compete, I will carb load a lot. I'm talking seven to 900 carbs right afterwards. And then I'll wake up in the middle of the night. I'll do another big carb meal and then I'll gradually do carb every two hours depending on how I'm looking and typically when I'm on stage I'm about five to seven pounds heavier because of all the glycogen and I'm really really full I'm usually really heavy on stage compared to where my weigh-in was well I tested this out I didn't do that huge carb up and I actually at the end of my first show in the morning you have all the pre-judging early in the morning I went back to the hotel feeling kind of sluggish felt kind of small went back to the hotel and weighed myself I actually weighed less after the show after my pre-judging than I did at my weigh-in. That's the last thing you want. You want to be full. So that's the other thing I really learned. I pretty much knew I needed to carb load, but because this was just a first show, I didn't want to overdo anything with my body because I want my body to be 100% for this second show. And so that's 
my preparation now. I'm in Vegas. I'm going to be doing some minimal macros. Basically, I'm not doing very many carbs at all while I'm here. I don't want to overindulge or do anything like that. We are having two meals as a big group together. So at those meals, real nice restaurants, I'm going to make a really good healthy choice with my protein. Lean steak or lean chicken or maybe I won't do fish. I'll be straight up honest. So it's either going to be grilled chicken or a lean cut of steak. And then I'll do either rice or maybe some kind of potatoes, baked potato or something like that in a salad. So I'll keep it fairly clean, but those are going to be my carbs while I'm here. Both meals, I'll choose something similar. Other than that, man, I am doing straight chicken breasts and green beans. I don't like broccoli, asparagus, otherwise I would be doing that. So chicken breasts, green beans, those are my staples. That's what I packed with me. That's what I brought. So it's going to be super simple. I'm also working out at Dragon's Lair Gym in the morning for the next three mornings. So we're doing that Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning. Super excited about that. Flex Lewis's gym in Las Vegas. So super pumped about that. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to get some really good workouts, but I'm not really going to push myself too hard. Again, don't want to get injured right before this other big show of mine. And I'm going to be doing 45 minutes of cardio every day that I'm here. So that's what I'm doing as far as I'm not going to be eating much at all. I'm not going to do any workouts, not going to do any cardio. I'm going to be at the airport most of the day or on the plane most of the day. And I'm going to get back really late and I'm going to spend time with my family, wake up Monday morning and it is straight up peak week. Depletion workout Monday, depletion workout Tuesday, depletion workout Wednesday, light workout probably Thursday only to offset this trip. Typically I wouldn't work out that close to a show, but because of, you know, me being thrown off with this trip, I want to make sure I do everything in my power to be really lean. All right. And then my plan today is on Thursday, have a huge carb up seven to 800 carbs. Friday, depending on how I look, maybe another 500. And that should get me full for that show. That's my whole goal. I want to look a lot better at that main show than I did the first show. But just wanted to give you guys the update, let you know where I'm at. Let me give you a quick view. This room is kind of strange, in my opinion, because there's a lot of, uh, there's lit mirrors, man. I don't know. Let me see if I can turn this around and show it to you guys. All right. Big mirror. Boom. Not bad for posing, though. Lit up. Right across, guess what? Another big mirror, yes. Big mirror lit up. This dude's got mirrors everywhere, man. And uh, But I do have a pretty cool view. I will show you guys my view here. All right, so hopefully you can see that. There may be bad reflections. Looks like there's a pretty fancy pole down there, man, to check out. Probably won't have time, but it would be really cool. Yeah, so a couple cool buildings out here, man. This is my first time in Las Vegas, so definitely not a fun trip, though, for me. It's more of a... Uh, business and networking trip so it's all business all networking trying to grow my coaching that I'm currently doing and let me get you back over here to be so grow my coaching business so that's what this is all about learning I've I coach a lot of guys right now a lot of older guys I'm trying to get to where I'm coaching a lot more but more efficiently all right so when you've got 70 to 100 guys coaching it's freaking time consuming man all right so I'm trying to figure out ways to get my coaches to help out to get some other things going and uh, just to make it a little bit easier on me and my time because again at 48 I don't like working 70 hour work weeks and that's pretty much what I do and uh, so I work a lot trying to cut back still want to service a lot of guys even girls man so again so that's pretty much what I'm doing coaching been coaching a lot of men and not really contest coaching all right because that's very time consuming contest prep the cool thing I will say about coaching athletes is you tell them what to do they put in the work and they do it makes it easy as a coach the bad thing is there's a lot of days that become very mental and challenging and tough and when you coach the general population there's a lot more questions a lot more well why why do I do this? Do I really need to do that? Or excuse after excuse after excuse. Not that that's a problem for me. I enjoy coaching people. I enjoy helping people get healthy, get fit. And if you watch my personal video, you realize fitness basically saved my life. It's something that I, it's not just something that I do. It's who I am. I have to do it. If I'm not working out, then I'm not happy. I'm irritable. I don't feel right. So it's a part of who I am. And, uh, and my family knows that luckily it's ingrained in them as well. I'm seeing it in my kids. And it's something that I try to continue to teach that don't think you just have to do this. It's one of those things I want you to be able to do and sustain without feeling like you're having to do it. I want you to want to do it, man. It doesn't have to be this hard. doesn't have to be this extreme. So me doing this bodybuilding competition, I don't recommend that for a lot of people. I'm just a very competitive person. I love competing. I love the camaraderie with other guys 
guys that put in this kind of work, this kind of dedication, this kind of desire. I know what it takes and very few people can do it. I know a lot of people that get right to the edge and back out at the end. And so once you've done a show, man, it's a completely different respect that I have for you because I know how difficult it is. Not physically, it's never the physical part. It's the mental, emotional. It is very challenging, but also it is one of the most rewarding things you can do. So that's why I do it. And at the end of the day, at my age, I'm probably going to do this next one. And I thought I would be done. But after talking to my family, talking to my kids, I realized, you know what? I'll be 50 next year. I'm pretty close to 50. And I've done nine shows. This next show will be number nine. So I think it makes more sense to do another show at 50 and be my 10th show. Top it off, then I'll be done. All right. So more about that down the road. But right now, I would love to just do this last one and relax for a year and a half and then see what happens when I hit 50. But guys, God bless you all. Thanks for watching this video. I'm hoping you're enjoying this journey. I've got another one coming to you. It's going to be more about what happened with this next show. So I'm going to document this week. I'm going to document next week, show you what I'm eating, show you some of my workouts, depletion workouts, show you a lot more behind the scenes things, out of town, backstage stuff, a lot of that stuff. And then I will show you how I did. Hopefully I do great, but we'll see. If not, at the end of the day, all that matters is I bring my best package. If I get fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth, and I lose to a lot of people that just happen to look better, then I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is not doing my best. So that's all that matters to me. Do my best, bring my best, and then whatever happens, happens. With that said, God bless you guys, and uh, see you in another video.